Hey friends, welcome back to another week of hot news. I, I'm wearing a hat uh, for, for a very good reason, in case you didn't notice, I have no hair left. And that's because on Friday, we had a our second annual 24 hour charity live stream raising money for orphan and vulnerable children in Southern Africa. And holy freaking crap, did you guys show up with fierce, phenomenal power because we raised a total of 10, thousand dollars in just 24 hours for the children you guys contributed six thousand two hundred and twenty two dollars woot wear match for three thousand seven hundred and seventy eight dollars to bring it up to an even nice round ten thousand dollars a big thanks to everybody who came out a big thanks to the sponsors of the stream which would be woot wear team group and rocco mama's brooklyn for hooking us up with the meals for the stream my goodness like this i'm, I'm just i'm speechless i'm flabbergasted like I, I want to spend the very beginning of this hot news just saying thank you to everybody who showed up, who contributed, who chatted with us during the 24 hours. It was a wild time. I set the goal to shave my head to go bald at $5,000 and uh, I wasn't expecting to hit that. And now I, I look like this. So Reese, can I have my hat back? You guys let me know, do you like hat Brett or non-hat Brett? Cause uh, I'm, I'm partial to hatted Brett during this bald phase that we're gonna go through on the channel. But it was for a great cause. You guys did amazing stuff. And I honestly can't wait until next year to see what you guys can show up and do. So with that being said, let's talk about today's sponsor of Hot News, GGWP and their gaming gear wooden platform. This desk, my friend, syncs RGB lighting with your computer. You can see it fits everything it has fantastic cable management routing it has an acrylic piece that goes through both of the tabletops right here and distributes all of the light right here on me and then also underneath making a gorgeous underglow and back glow and side glow it just glows your entire room up my friend you're gonna want to check this thing out they have two different models the esports pro as well as the alpha desk and you can pick them up at the link in the video description currently only available in south africa but they're looking to open up international shipping sometime soon we love this desk it is the uh, uh, just basically where we do all of our benchmarking and testing from here on forth. So big thanks to GGWP for sponsoring this video. We have the number one. You guys can maybe pick up something else, but uh, we're a top dog with this. Anyways, link in the description. And now that that's done, let's go ahead and talk about the good hot news that we got, which is AMD with the Ryzen 3000 stuff. We've got a leaked 12 core Ryzen third gen coming out in a benchmark showing up in fierce ferocity. Looks like this is gonna be an early engineering sample of what is rumored to be the 3700X. And you can see here, uh, we got some decent performance. It had a base clock of 3.4 gigahertz and then averaged about a 3.6 gigahertz turbo, which is okay. That's not that fast, but considering this is still an engineering sample, and we're not sure of the release date. We are expecting much higher clock speeds towards launch. But you see these scores right over here, that 116 points on single core, 374 on quad core and all of that over there. Well, when you compare that to a Ryzen 7 2700X, it's about the same as a 2700X at 4.3 gigahertz. So 3.6 gigahertz in the single core performance versus a 4.3 gigahertz 2700X and it beats it, which means that the IPC improvement of the single core looks like it might be on average about 13%, which would put them well above Intel. If we get a 13% IPC improvement, this is gonna this is gonna be the gaming chip to have no matter what. And especially since it looks like it was running at a RAM speed of 2666 megahertz, this is gonna be insanely fast, especially if they can get it up to the 4.5 to 4.8 gigahertz that we're expecting on this thing at launch. This is gonna decimate every single game benchmark that we're expecting. This, this is pretty impressive. 3700X, 12 cores, hopefully we'll get 16 cores, but uh, Ryzen. I just, it's like the charity fundraiser. I'm at a loss for words here. But let's talk about Intel and their uh, 9900T, which is gonna be a 35 watt version of their eight core 16 thread CPU. It looks like it's gonna have a base clock of only 1.7 gigahertz and then a boost clock of 3.8, whereas the 9900K has a five gigahertz boost clock and a 3.6 gigahertz base. So this is gonna be insanely slow, but uh, eight cores, 16 threads, and then you only have 35 watts. So you don't have to worry about cooling this thing, but uh, yeah, you can't, can't really use it very well. 
Intel, why? You know what I was saying why about this past weekend though, especially on Friday during the stream, Anthem and their servers being so gosh dang terrible, especially on launch. Did you guys get to play Anthem? Did you enjoy it? Let me know in that poll right up there. But let's go ahead and talk about some benchmarks because uh, Tech Power Up was able to benchmark it on Vega cards and RTX cards. And it looks like, uh, yeah, it's optimized for Turing. Who would have thought an NVIDIA title just uh, not performing well in AMD cards at all. You see here the Vega 64 is losing to the RTX 2060 by 20 FPS. That 2060 is supposed to compete with the Vega 56, and this is nowhere anywhere near close to good. The Vega 64 are getting absolutely decimated in everything besides 4K, where the six gigabytes of VRAM on the 2060 seem to catch up to it, where it still has a one FPS lead, even though it shouldn't. But uh, yeah, look, that's bad. That is bad. However, AMD isn't sitting, sitting lying down. My bald head doesn't allow words to come out good. They, they released a new adrenaline driver patch where they claim that a, you can get a 7% boost for Anthem in the new drivers on adrenaline 19.1.2. So uh, in case you were having bad Anthem stuff, you can update the drivers, but now that the demo is over, you'll have to wait till the open beta that comes out in a couple weeks. Next week? I think it's next week. I don't, know. Oh, like later this week. I don't know, I got in the demo, why do I care about the open? Hopefully they fix crap. But you know what, they're not fixing the things that NVIDIA's touting, which is deep learning super sampling, it's not in the game. And it's not gonna be in the game at launch either. And uh, they're saying near launch is uh, what, we're, what we're getting here. Which, um, funny enough, that's what they said about Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And uh, when did that game come out, Tank? Like four months ago? Still no, still no uh, ray tracing like we're supposed to get. Anyways, uh, deep learning super sampling not coming at launch. Shortly after launch is what they're saying, and then potentially ray tracing down the line. I'd like, I want to get hyped for all this new Nvidia technology, but the game developers are making it so gosh dang hard. It looks like we'll have to wait till Metro Exodus comes out on February fifteenth. <gasps> Hiccups. Which I mean, technically, yeah. So this comes out on the twenty second, and then. 15th is Metro Exodus. So this comes out before anyway. Metro Exodus comes out before anyway. So I didn't like it. It just seems like an expensive Warframe. That that was my, I don't know. You, you guys voted. You let me know if you enjoyed it. But let's speak about AMD a little bit more. They're restructuring their leadership team with James Pryor actually ended up leaving saying, looking forward to my new adventure, a 2019 filled with hashtag family, hashtag fun, and good hashtag work. P.S. I no longer work for AMD, more to come. Wow, that's, uh, that's one way to announce it, James. In case you don't know who James Pryor was, he's a senior product manager, was a senior product manager, and was there for nearly six years. You know, we could say all the good things that we want about Lisa Sue, but the fact that they're losing so much senior leadership is kind of concerning to me. I mean, it could just be that she's uh, doing away with all of the, the chaff and she's keeping the wheat, but I've never really seen a company lose this many senior level people and not have something wrong under the surface. But again, that's my speculation. We haven't done an in-depth research into the management structure of AMD. I just, from an outsider pleb perspective of not knowing how to run a giant organization, I just, alarm bells are going off in my mind. I'm like, I can't see Radeon Technology Group being in a good place right now. CPUs seem to be going fine, but AMD as a company just, like, what's happening? I, I, I wanna see how this plays out over the next few years. Drama, I want, I want the drama. But you know what I'm not gonna get, Reese? What? Conspiracy videos. You know why? Because YouTube's not gonna recommend them to me anymore. This is gonna ruin the conspiracy time with Brett segment that I do. Where am I gonna learn about the North American Sasquatch mating with the albino Yeti and then making babies that fly in the sky like unicorns spreading chemtrails? Where am I gonna learn about this now, Reese? Huh? This. I was, I went to YouTube for this information and now they're gonna recommend me fewer conspiracy theory videos. I'm not okay with this. Just because you don't believe in the flat earth doesn't mean you can't have an open mind. If YouTube has taught me anything, it's that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so real serious, uh, YouTube is saying that they're gonna be promoting fewer videos containing misinformation and conspiracy theory videos and that it would stop recommending what it calls borderline content. So cool. I'm just frustrated because uh, I don't get my conspiracies anymore. It's good, wholesome entertainment for me. I know what the truth is, but then I get to see how people twist the facts into something that makes fun for them. You know, it's not a conspiracy theory though. Companies trying to take your biometric data without your permission. Yeah, trying to get your fingerprints, your facial ID recognition, all of that kind of stuff. Well, you know what? Illinois says no longer their Supreme Court ruled in a pretty uh, important legal case saying that 
Companies aren't allowed to do that without your permission. This was in a ruling against Six Flags where they allegedly took fingerprints of a 14 year old uh, child without parental approval and uh, that you know, the parents got upset and the Six Flags said that it couldn't be held liable unless they demonstrated a tangible injury from the unauthorized collection, which I mean, yeah, you're, unless they're like slamming your hand down on the fingerprint scanner, you're not gonna have an injury. However, the Illinois Supreme Court said that a person need not have sustained actual damage beyond violation of his or her rights under the act, which I think is a pretty landmark case. It makes me happy to know that uh, at least Illinois has our backs in making sure that our biometric data isn't the fodder of companies like Facebook who don't take your permission to use uh, things like you, you know scanning your face and tagging you in photos, which this could actually shake up the global industry as we know it. I personally have no problem with giving away my biometric data for ease of convenience. I mean, I freaking have Face ID on my iPhone. Totally okay with that. I'm okay with giving companies my permission to use my biometric data. But in the case where I'm not approving it and they're using it anyways, I'm glad that Illinois is sticking up for us. Let's see where this goes in the future. I don't know why I split up the AMD articles, but I did. We got Radeon 7 news. So uh, we got listings from Sapphire and XFX kind of showing off some details about what we're we're gonna be getting. And in case you notice, this Sapphire card looks like the reference version, because it does, and it doesn't look like we're gonna be getting custom models anytime soon. Apparently, AMD didn't give them enough time, or it could be like Vega, where we're not getting them until like five years down the product life cycle, who knows? Anyways, the good information that we got out of this was stuff like the memory speed, which is gonna be about two gigahertz, the base clock is gonna be 1450, and the boost clock is gonna be 1800 megahertz, which is pretty fast. So we're gonna get that one terabyte of memory bandwidth, and then it's gonna be rated for 300 watts of power with the two PCI eight pin PCI Express connectors, which that isn't that bad. 300 watts, seven nanometers, gonna be slightly faster than a 1080 Ti, which was not rated for 300 watts. Now it's still AMD, it's a furnace, Never mind. And then there's a report coming out that the 16 gigabytes of HBM2 that's been being used in Radeon 7 cost $320 alone. That is half the price of the card. That is insane. So that's not including, you know, the PCB design, the GPU core, the shroud, all of that good stuff. $320 for the VRAM itself. I don't like it. I don't like the 16 gigabytes of VRAM on a gaming card. I'm tired of arguing with people in the comments. It's a gaming card. AMD is promoting it as a gaming card. Yes, they showed content creation, but that was a byline in the promotional material that they had at CES. I'm not sure that this is actually worth it. They can't get it down to eight gigabytes of HBM2 because then they couldn't have the one terabyte of memory bandwidth, which is what's giving its performance increase over a Vega 64. Just buy Vega 56 and 64 over this thing. That, that would be my recommendation at this point. Mm -mm, not ready on seven, not looking good. You know what else isn't looking good? Intel in their fourth quarter, uh, they had no year on year growth in the fourth quarter of 2018, which is a little, uh, a little sad. So they're expecting that uh, Q1 of 2019 is also going to be likewise stagnant, if not losing just a little bit. Uh, about 1% is what they're quoting right now. But yeah, not, not, not happy days for Intel. Doesn't look like they're gonna be having a great 2019, especially since they're not really competitive in a whole lot of markets right now, thanks to AMD's resurgence. And I know I get a lot of people telling me about stuff like, oh no, 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 they're good in the server market. Yeah, well, Epic's getting there too. I'm not an AMD fanboy, I hate their GPUs. And then some fun stories. Terry Crews wants to be Jax in Mortal Kombat, and then the game creator wants, uh, wants that as well. So, uh, you know, that's that's some good fan right there is Terry Crews' Jax. Let's make it happen. Terry Crews, Mortal Kombat 11, please. And then NVIDIA has published the clock speeds for their Max-Q graphics cards that go into laptops. They're slightly slower than the regular laptop ones. And you can see here, 2080 Max-Q has a boost clock of 1,590 megahertz, whereas the base clock of the desktop 2080 is 1550. There's all the boost and base clocks of the Max-Q versions of the 2080, 2070, and 2060 respectively. Pretty dang slow at the beginning, you see? Down to a minimum of 735 megahertz, which is really, wow. That's like, that's like half of what it's supposed to be. That's a tiny boy. So you need to check when you buy Max-Q versions of RTX laptops, which one are you getting? Are you getting the one that has a base clock of 735 megahertz or are you getting one with a base clock of 1380? Because that's a massive difference. 
talk about NVIDIA's shady stuff. I mean, that's, that's just gonna be hidden in plain sight. But you know what else is hidden in plain sight? A man in Florida, Florida man, discovers a World War II hand grenade, and then he drives it to a local Taco Bell. That's the headline of the day. The Taco Bell had to be evacuated. It was in Ocala, of course it was in Ocala. On Silver, East Silver Springs Boulevard. I know where that is. Jeez, I lived in Gainesville. Like it's the 30 minute drive from this place. Florida people, come on. I'm aware that I'm wearing a Florida Gators hat so I can talk about my own kind like this. We, we have issues. We gotta stop doing this kind of crap. We need to stop being worthy of our own subreddit. <laughs> All right, that's where I'm gonna end today's video. Let me know what you think about the 12 core AMD Ryzen CPU. Let me know what you think about AMD's corporate restructuring. What did you think about Anthem? What do you think about the fact that you guys are amazing and we raised $10,000 for charity? Hmm? Cause I feel pretty happy about that one. I think you should hit the like button just for that reason alone because you guys are so amazing, right? Yeah, don't forget that today's video is brought to you by the GGWP desk. If you're interested, check it out at the link in the video description. Yes, hit subscribe if you want to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I forgot the outro, love you too, bye.